Hello everyone. Before we start, I would like to note that the example we will be solving in this video is exactly the same one that we have solved in video number 21 with only one addition is the presence of another sensor S2 and another eject 2 solenoid that we did not have in the first example. So if you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend that you folks go back and see it for two main reasons. The first one is I was very thorough in that video and presenting a number of uh, tips that could help you build a solution for any big or complicated problem. And the second reason is I on purpose presented a solution for that uh, problem and on video 21 with a glitch on it. Okay, because it's very common that whenever you are building a program in any language that you will end up having a solution with some glitches in it and it's good to be able to identify these glitches and rectify them. So, in this problem, I'm going to deal with it as a standalone one. We will present an overall solution with that glitch rectified. So, what we have, we have a, a main conveyor belt that's going to carry a number of packages on it. And each one of these packages will be sensed by sensor S1. Sensor S1 has one main job is to sense uh, these items and trigger an eject solenoid. This solenoid, we will refer to it as eject1 in our program. Now, our program needs to make sure that this eject solenoid, eject1, will be maintained for half a second or 500 milliseconds. The reason we need to make sure that we are going to build this requirement is to, in, to provide a an, an good power and momentum to push these par items or parts into the uh, secondary belt where the assembly will take place. After the 500 millisecond is over, the solenoid will retract and go back to its original place. Second requirement, uh, only four items are uh, can be pushed into the assembly machine or the assembly buffer. So far, the example over here is exactly the same as we had in video 21. So our program up to this point needs to make sure that only four items do fit over here. So if by any chance, our items are still at the number 4 over here and the fifth item is sensed by S1 our program need to make sure that S1 won't trigger eject 1 and the item will go forward until another station that, that might be uh, in the queue over here okay so we have so far it is V21 and now we come to the additional part where uh, any item in the secondary belt would be sensed by sensor S2 and similar to what we have on the top S2 it's going to trigger another eject solenoid we will refer to it as eject 2 and it's going to push it for 500 milliseconds the same reason we need to make sure we are providing enough power and momentum to push these items from the assembly into the final storage so this is the problem that we have and right now we are going to build the solution for it using our logic spy transit so let's go there Okay, so right now we have the solution that we ended up building in video number 21 alongside with the rectification for the glitch that we mentioned. However, I'm not going to talk about the glitch right now. I will leave the comments area for any further discussion about it. So before we start, let me just walk you through the tags that we have in our program, most of them that we have used in video number 21. So C1 is the tag name with a data counter that's going to hold uh, the number of items we have inside within the assembly area. Eject 1 and Eject 2 are two tags with boolean data types. We are going to assign for the two solenoids we have in our program. S1 and S2, another two tags with boolean data types that we are going to assign for the two sensors we have. And finally, we have T1 and T2 are two tags with the timer data types that we will use to drive uh, Eject 1 and Eject 2. So back to our program. In the first round, we have S1 triggering eject 1, and we have the latch over here to, to maintain eject 1 uh, with the same preset value that we have over here. And we are using eject 1 to trigger counter in the up direction to, to denote that an item has entered uh, the assembly area. So let's go ahead right now and add similar structure uh, for S2 and T2. Okay. So what we need to add right now, new run, we are going to build a similar structure. So an XIC driving uh, the timer. So S2 
is triggering right now we will use timer 2 for clarification purposes we're going with 5 seconds rather than uh, half a second at the same time anytime as to driving the timer it what it will do it's, it will also trigger the counter are we going to use a second counter no we are keeping track of the number of items within the assembly area so we will use the same tag name c1 however with countdown instruction so countdown c1 for for preset value and of course we need to maintain the timer too for this the preset value that we have over here so what we will do we will simply create latch across s2 with timer 2 timer timing okay the last step is to create another rank for ejector by doing so we will finish our program eject to to the right side it's an output so eject to will be driven by timer 2 TT okay so I guess right now our program is complete as you can see it consists of four runs we have two runs for eject one and eject two each has its own run and we have for the counters and needless to say we can reduce the number of ranks to two okay we can leave this uh, for any customer so let's go ahead download this and see how we can troubleshoot and make sure that it's actually fulfilling all the requirements that we have let's go ahead okay so right now i finished downloading the program into the plc as you can see uh, the rails have changed the green color it means our program does not have any syntax errors. Right now we need to do our job in terms of running it, testing it, uh, giving it some values, and make sure that it doesn't have any glitches or uh, logical errors. So to the right side, you can see we have our program area, right? And to the left side, I have created um, my mini watch list that consists of all the inputs and outputs that are involved uh, in our program. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the testing. So right now, each time S1, which is a normally open sensor, senses an item, it goes from open to close, which will reflect in PLC memory going from 0 to 1. When this happens, uh, eject one is on, the timer is on, and as you can see the counter the accumulator goes to 1, denoting that one item has actually entered the assembly area. Okay, let's start this again. So sensor S1 senses something, goes from 0 to 1. And then the same thing happens, timer is working, and C1 is holding too. Um, sometimes, folks, when you are building a program for a large application, you might have so many runs involved, many inputs and outputs are actually involved. A good practice for, for you when you are testing your work is narrowing your focus instead of looking at the program itself. Simply look at the watch list that you have created. Okay, so right now, if you look, Right now I have, okay, S1 is 0 because it's not sensing anything. Eject 1 is 0 because it's uh, de-energized. Uh, T1 accumulator is 0 because the timer is not running. Counter 1 accumulator is 2. So as you can see, it's the same value we see it over here. However, on a simplified uh, scale. So right now, let's do the same testing right now, but let's narrow our focus to the left side, to the watch list that we have. Right now, I'm ignoring the program area. So sensor 1 goes from 0 to 1. Okay, as you can see, sensor 1, right? And the timer is running, and I commit is at 2. Okay, so let's see again. So running, I commit goes to 3. And that's what's happening, right? We can only, we're looking at the watch list right now. Let's go ahead and test S2, by the way. Okay, S2, when it goes from uh, 0 to 1. What's one, what other what thing is going to happen? Let me guess. Timer 2 is running. Eject 2 is on. But look at the counter. It went from 3 to 2. Let's try this again. Right now the accumulator of the counter is at 2, right? So if we trigger S2 right now one more time, as you can see, the counter went down to 1. And that's what actually it's supposed to work. So, so far it's working fine. Let's go ahead and keep the trigger S1 a uh, couple more times. So we have this over here. 
it goes from 0 to 1, counter goes to 2, eject one is on, so so far it's good, one more time, counter goes to 3, and let's go ahead and try to make it to 4, see what's going to happen. So right now it goes to 4, eject one is on for uh, the amount of 5 seconds. What do you think right now should happen if sense one, uh, S1 actually senses an item? Let's see. Anything happens? No. As you can see, the eject one did not trigger. Uh, timer one did not go on. And S1, even though it's sensing anything, as you can see, uh, the outputs uh, regarding or controlled or driven by S1 are not active. Sim why? Because our logic makes sure using the counter 1 dumbbell that if the, the counter is at 4 it means the assembly area is full and and we will not trigger eject 1 in order not to push any item and into the assembly area and whatever item we have on the main belt will uh, move forward to another assembly area okay so that's the program in RS logics and I believe it's working fine if you have any comments, uh, please do not hesitate to leave them in the comments area. Okay, see you in later videos very soon.